Hello, this is Christopher Kenworthy and welcome to Sky Replacement Techniques in After Effects. I'm going to take the Climb clip here, drop it onto the Create New Composition button and when we play through this you can see that there's a little bit of movement in there and so we're going to have to track this if we're to put a new sky in. This is about as simple as it gets. The basic technique is track the motion in the shot, then get rid of the sky using one of the many techniques that I show you and then put in a new sky. So this shot is from a sequence that was filmed on a largely cloudy day and so this image of the blue sky doesn't quite fit. So to get it to edit in properly we need to add more clouds. I'm going to show you many different ways to get rid of the sky but in this case rather than getting rid of it we'll just add to it. So I'll drag the white clouds into the composition and now I'm going to change the blending mode. Right click and go to blending mode overlay and you can see there that where the clouds are over the blue sky we get a fairly good approximation of what's over on the right so we could just add those new clouds in and they'd look pretty good you can try different blending modes depending on the shot hard light might work better I think that actually does work better for this shot you could even try linear light for some it doesn't work here it's worth trying all these and seeing what works best for the shot. Sometimes something as subtle as that, which is soft light, will work if you only want an impression of cloud. But because we've got this bright white cloud on the right of the image, we probably need to go for hard light. Now rather than trying to fill the whole frame with cloud, I'm just going to position it so we have a little more cloud coming over the top of the ridge here so that it matches what's on the right. Now I need to zoom in and draw a mask over this edge. So I'll select the pen tool and then I'll just click my way across here around the edge of the rock. I have to be quite accurate with this. Sometimes with the masking you can be inaccurate and you get away with it. But here, because the rock edge is so sharp, we need to be fairly accurate. And one way to be accurate is just to make lots of little small clicks like this. So working my way across and I'll be able to test this and if it's not right I can make adjustments later. Just hit H to bring up the hand tool, then G to go back to the pen. Now when I get to this point you can see that the sky here is much too blue compared to the real sky. So rather than masking out across the rock, I'm now going to start drawing the mask around the cloud itself. I can be a little less accurate here because the cloud is quite soft and we're going to be feathering that edge. So I'm clicking fairly close to the edge of the cloud but not being so cautious that I'm trying to get every little crinkle and detail of that edge. I'll just go out here to the side and once I'm off the image I'll just click back round to the end of the mask and that's now complete. If I click off you can see that's not a bad result straight away. We do want to feather that. One way to do that would be to hit F and then just drag these numbers up to increase the feather. I think you could be satisfied with that overall. Perhaps though the blue on the right is not blending properly with the blue of the real sky. So instead I'll set this feather back to zero and then I'll use the mask feather tool. So up here choose the mask feather tool and then just click on any point over here and drag the mask out like that. I don't want to go too far. You can see if I go too far I just get the hard edge of the frame there. So I'll drag out somewhere near there and then I'll click somewhere else around here and drag inside to bring that mask inside as well. I'll hit the tilde key and zoom in. I don't want to be masking down here so I'm going to click on the dotted line and drag that back towards the rock there. We want that to be a very sharp edge and I'll do the same here. So that we've really just got that mask feather going out to blend the skies here. So that's done the job there. I'll hit the tilde key again and go to fit up to 100%. You can see that blends quite well with the background. However, I am going to just apply the hue saturation filter and just drag the saturation down a little because it's still a bit too blue for my liking. And there, that helps it to blend. 
Now of course if we play through that cloud isn't in the right place at all and it just keeps moving as the shot moves so we need to track it into place. So select the climb layer and with the tracker chosen go down here to track motion. Make sure your motion source is the climb movie and then check position and rotation and now up here you can see we have two little boxes for position and rotation and for each of these we need to select a good tracking point something with high contrast. So I'm just going to zoom in when you're trying to move these be careful not to click on the boxes themselves because you'll just resize them if you do. Instead click on the inside of the box very near to this crosshair in the middle and then you can move around and as you do you see the area that's just beneath the crosshair and you can find a nice spot of high contrast. I'm just looking down here, there's a good block there and with the other one I'll go down here. It's best if this line between the two is fairly horizontal. It doesn't have to be completely horizontal but the closer it is the less work you'll have to do later. Now we need to give this a target. We could just apply the position and rotation to the layer but that can cause problems if you need to adjust the rotation. So let's go to layer, new and null object. We now have null one appearing here and then in the tracker we click on edit target and choose null one. Click OK. Make sure you're at the beginning of the frame and then go down to this analyze forward button and click that. And you can see there we've followed the track of those two points all the way through. Let's just apply it to the null. Click apply. And now if you watch the red box of the null that should follow the movement of our foreground there. Now we need to get the clouds to follow that so click on the white clouds layer and here we have the parenting lasso. Just grab hold of that and drag a line up to the null and that means the white clouds layer is now going to follow the motion of that null and you can see that's now tracked perfectly into place. So this is a very simple example and the idea as always is that this is something that the audience won't even notice. They shouldn't know this is a special effect, they should just see clouds in the background and assume that they're real. To add to that overall impression make sure you click on the motion blur box and switch on motion blurring here. Depending on your footage you may want to add a blur to that but I think for this particular shot that's complete.